89.3 WRG for keeping us informed with that situation. You know, the brother, what about nine witnesses? Seven out of nine recanted. One of the nine is claimed to be the actual killer. And then one of, uh, I can't remember, but uh, one of them they can't find. But bottom line is that they all recanted and they all were coerced. So we got an innocent man on death row. Mm -hmm. So um, time is ticking, y'all. We got to got dang stay on this. We, we definitely gonna deal with this today. And um, finally, uh, AFRICOM. You know, we got excited during the Obama de uh, election, you know, first black president, this and that. And you know, you had some revolutionaries like Gidon Ben Israel, like, I smell, a, I smell a rat. So when we talk about AFRICOM and forces going into Africa, you know, we got niggers over here in the U.S. talking about, well, um, you know, they're not concerned about Africa, but if you go outside and kick the um, tires on your car, that comes out of Congo. If you got a computer right now, that comes out of uh, Zaire. So all these raw materials come out of Africa. So in order to go into the 21st century, you got to learn about AFRICOM. AFRICOM is this force that we're talking about as far as Obama, if you pay attention to the one thing about the Obama deception that Alec Jones had, uh, he had said with his own mouth that we need to form a type of um, civilian military. Now, do what, they want these people to, you know, us as Negroes to get all patriotic and to go into Africa. They want to, they were talking about, they want to kick the Chinese out. But yeah, they want to what? Replace one slave master with another? Is that what they want to do? You tell me. So with that being said, I'm going to go a further delay. I want to introduce to my right, Brother Kumal. What's up, Brother Kumal? Peace, peace. And to his right, the realist, Jay Realist, is in the, his house. And brother next to you, uh, Young Antoine, uh, Angelo. Angelo. Angelo, Angelo, Brother Angelo. What's good, yeah? All right. And next to Brother Angelo, we got Sister, OK, she took my paper. What? I didn't write down your name. Empress Sabah Mene. OK, Empress Sabah Mene, give thanks. OK. And Brother Vibes next to her. We got Brother Vibes, all right. That's the flower. Right. OK. Next to him, we got Brother Prince, the elder on this set, Prince Zebekiah. Shalom, brother. Next to him, y'all know Black Fire is in his house. OK. Next to him, y'all know he was here last week. Yes, sir. Brothers, um, God dang, Manessa, Vanessa, sorry, Manessa. And next to that, brother Manessa, we got brother Knowledge. Brother Knowledge, okay. Oh, let's see, where do I start? Alex Jones documentary. You know, come on, you the conspiracy theorist on the panel. <laughs> you know, Alex Jones, you know, Prison Planet, Illuminati, you got all these. I like to say in the black national community, spookism. Um, what's your take? I mean, he's a Caucasian giving you information. You know, you got books like the Behold Pale White Horse was done by a Caucasian. So well, give us your take. I mean, you, you, know, you talk about the Bible being disluted by the white man. So all these conspiracy theories, the Illuminati. It's, it's all spookism. <laughs> oh, that's part of it too. I mean, because they, because they created, they, they created both, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, that, that even goes, we can go even to what you people refer to as the sciences. But I don't want to get too far off track off the subject, but okay. I, I, I didn't realize who it was, and then it popped into my head, and that's why I was like, President Alex Jones. But all this, a lot of this stuff is just basically created to get us all our emotions all wrapped up into these things that really don't apply to us. You know what I'm mm. saying? They don't serve us no difference. What we have to do is come together as a people. You know what I'm saying? So they, everybody has their own agendas. So Alex Jones, obviously, they're going to hit him. Like you said, Rush Limbaugh, they're going to have their own agendas, but they still have to suppress us. You know what I'm saying? So they can use us as another stepping stool uh, stepping stone to get to where they want to go. So the thing for us is knowledge of self, learning our culture, learning who we are, learning our languages, and so we it is, it'll make it very cohesive for us to come together so we can form a black military or nationalists or we can do other things that different people in different schools of thought 
are ready to do. We can get some land and raise our own vegetables and fruits and food and stuff like that. But we have to learn who and what we are and where we come from. But most importantly, we have to stay positive. So because if we stay positive, it's like the 5% of say air life. You know what I'm saying? That magnetic mm -hmm. pull is going to be the attraction that brings us together. OK, well, Brother Black Fire. Yes, I know. You have two legendary men, one by the name of Peter Tosh, yeah. one by the name of Bob Marley. Sure. You know, we all know Bob Marley is always talking about peace. Right. But Peter Tosh said, I don't want peace. I come for justice and equality. So, Brother Kamal talked about us coming together as a nation, but you had two that were in the nation. In fact, you had a teacher and a student, by the way. That's right. That's you know, right. so can, can you dwell on that situation more in depth, yeah, Brother? Yeah, yeah, you touched on my favorite topic there, is music, you know, and reggae music. Yeah, man. It's close to the heartbeat, the pulsation of Rasta. Music is life. When they stripped us in our journey from Africa here, one of the main things they targeted was the music. We couldn't have our drums and those things. So you can see that part of the revolution has to be bringing the drums forward again. Yeah, right. That's what Peter Tosh conquered. He actually built his own guitar when he was like seven, eight, and been playing from that time. So he linked up through family structure with a man named Bob Marley to some marriages and a sister, so they became family. All right. And Bunny Whaler, who isn't always mentioned. So those three men were the Whalers. Okay. Chris Blackwell entered the picture from England, saw the talent. They were stars in Jamaica already. Went to capitalize on it, offered them some money. They did a record. He pulled Bob out of the group and said, let's make Bob Marley and the Whalers. Right. His name is Blackwell, but don't let that fool you. you That's know, right. He was not black. That's right. <laughs> aye, aye. So in his strategy, he was really looking out of his own words to play it off of the movie, The Harder They Come, which is Rebel was in the movie. So he was trying to tell us how to be rebels, more or less. That's right. Jimmy Cliff turned down Chris Blackwell at first, and he ended up seeking somebody else. So he approached like he was interested in the Whalers, but it was really Bob Marley he was pulling out of it to present our music. He knew revolution time was here for us. That's so it's right. natural that he wants to market it and get some financial benefit. Mm. So you see that translate now where it's difficult even for Bob Marley's sons where he has a few to get through the door. So Bob Marley's brown-skinned man, right? Mulatto, half-white half -white, mulatto right. type. Peter Tosh, Jesse Black like guy, yes, right? right? All right. You can already see the inherent conflict. Society mm. is going to embrace the mulatto. Right. They don't, even though Peter Tosh was the one that built the, the, the guitar, pay, played the first chords, you follow? That's right. Wrote most of the songs, or co-wrote at least. That's right. You follow? More and more, they pushed the Jesse Black man to the back and pulled up the more agreeable skin tone. Okay. And that's why Bob Marley, not because he had more talent, but just because he, one of them was going to go anyway because the world was listening. Well, they both went. They, they both went, but work. when you pour money, it's all about advertisement in order to marketing. reach it. Marketing, right. Because there's still a lot of people that don't know. You and I are aware, you know? That's right. But there's still a lot of people, they don't know nothing more than rock and roll. They still don't know blacks created that. They don't know nothing more than jazz and blues. You know what I mean? And they think they, they help create that. Stitch. DJ, Stitch, all the way down the line, you have the music evolving, being taken over by commerce, and becoming named something else or like... BET, Viacom only BET. I mean, it starts out for a black, by, it starts out FUBU and it ends up something else. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? So that's the same with the music. So reggae is not exempt to that virus. You okay. follow? Okay. Um, we're marketing this so we own it. No, we created it. It's always ours, no matter what ISBN number you put on it. So they created this feud between Bob and Peter now. Oh, okay. Yes, because Peter okay. helped to invest in it. Bob's now getting royalties. They're not written into the songs. A lot of tricky things are going on there now. Right. They did it on faith and brotherhood. All right. Spirit, yeah. you, you're the lead singer for that song, so we'll let you put your name down. But we know we all wrote it, so when the food come in, make sure everybody eat. Okay. You follow? But the food stopped going into one of their man's hands and started going into Chris Blackwell's hand. Mm. 
Caucasian. An executive right? producer. Okay. Right. All right. So now he's not, he don't care about Bunny Whaler and Peter Tosh. Or about the revolution. Yeah. He don't really care that much about Bob Marley, to be honest. So the